Shalom Chavrim. I want to take a little time uh, with you to speak to you about a film that I'm wanting to put together, a documentary, would be about an hour long, would be my guesstimation at, at, at present, that is dealing with the events that are going on right now. This is a film that I believe that we should put together. It should be gotten out before the end of the year. And I want to solicit your help. When I say your help, there's all different kinds of ways that we can help in doing this together. And I'll tell you in just a moment about the premise that I'm going to go in in the direction I want to go with this film. Uh, I'm wanting, uh, I, when I say to solicit your help, there's more ways than financial that can be a help in this. Uh, we have Brother John out there who has a uh, he's from California, and he has a great talent in the in the editing. Uh, uh, I don't forget all what John does, but he's the one that helped us with our trailer. And of course, now that was just him capturing the image from the computer, so it's not the quality that he wanted. But yet, at the same time, we can use some of the talents there. Uh, we want to go a lot deeper in with this, though, and uh, so financially, we'll need your help as well. And I say this, and you know how I am, I don't like to dun people for money, but I think it's important that the message be gotten out about the dividing of the land of Israel. Now, as Christians know, this is going to happen. It is prophetic. It will take place. There's nothing we can do to change that, but our role as Christians and the stand that Christians take with Israel and for Israel and to sound the alarm, to be the watchman on the wall, as so many of you guys say out there, I think this message needs to be gotten out there before they finish these negotiations. Uh, and I know it's a lot to get together because what I'm looking to do in this film, let me just share with you the film that I want to do. And partly this has been inspired by Sid Roth when speaking with him, his delight in hearing the revelations, uh, in shock, I might add, uh, the revelation that God gave me. And I didn't share with Sid everything uh, because I just couldn't remember everything. Uh, needless to say, I mean, we spent together nearly an hour, but still there was a lot that could be said. I'm wanting to focus, as of right now in my mind, four women in the Bible. And it's really kind of odd that I'm doing this. Now, when I say the four women in the Bible, I will touch on prophecies, no doubt, through this film with Jeremiah, Ezekiel, uh, Zechariah as well. But I find it rather fascinating that we're living in the last days where so much revelation is coming forth about translations in the scriptures and things of this nature here and where things were misquoted and as you see in the redemption of Israel, the story of redemption that I've shared with you there, that God never intended for uh, men and women or, or men to be a, an authoritarian figure over his wife, but it was meant to be a partnership. And so I find it interesting that these, that, that God actually in these stories that I'm going to one in this film, which is going to be the story of Rebecca, the story of Abigail, the story of Ruth and Naomi, as well as the story of Esther. Uh, because every one of these stories are, are not just cyclical, they're prophetic and profound events regarding what is happening to Israel today. And just quickly, those of you that may not have seen some of these teachings that I've done thus far, Rebecca recently, as the Lord led me and showed me how that the two children in her womb, Esau and Jacob, and how that they were two nations, they would be divided when they came out, showing that Israel would be split as the two nations, and that it would be the Palestinian state and a Jewish state. They don't even want to call it a state of Israel. It is amazing how this is happening here. Uh, Abigail, this will be great because we're going to do it in a story format, by the way, too. When we do the documentary, we want it to be in a story format. So it's gonna, they're going to intertwine as this was brought out. And uh, But when we look at Abigail, when Benjamin Netanyahu was snubbed by President Obama at the White House, and how when, I, when the Lord showed me this, it uh, didn't happen at the time that he said. It was a little while later, maybe a year later, the Lord revealed to me that this was the type of Nabal, Obama played the part of Nabal, the fool, as Abigail's husband's name means, a fool. And he snubbed Benjamin Netanyahu, just like Nabal snubbed David, saying, who does he think he is? 
Everybody thinks they're kings and, and things of this nature. You know, so who does this guy think he is? And yet David was going to arm himself and destroy Nabal. After he had done all he had done for his men, I mean, he had kept his men safe, protected his men, his flocks, his herds and everything. And yet the United States, where is Richard Nixon, the great president that once stood by Israel, even with an impeachment looming over his head? Where is a great man like that, that believed in the supernatural, believed that Israel was truly a chosen nation of God? And so we look at that story there of, of Abigail, and we see that uh, Abigail, like a type of the true bride, of Mashiach, this bride of the Messiah, she intervenes on her husband's behalf and begs for mercy for his foolishness. Michelle Bachman, a beautiful portrait of Abigail because she went there to the forefront and stood against the things that Obama was doing and cried out for the Christians to stand up in support of Israel. And then we have the, 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 the beautiful story of Ruth, who is a reflection of of the genuine, uh, uh, the, the genuine Christian of today. Naomi, as a type of Israel, was uh, the diaspora returning home. Her sons had died, showing the, the, the death and the, the, the Holocaust and the events that happened there. She comes home. She, her, Ruth, her Moabitess daughter, daughter-in-law, refuses to leave her side, showing that the true believer will stand by Israel today. The true believer stands, no matter what it looks like, they stand by her. When she returns home, Boaz, many Christians believe that Boaz is a type of Mashiach, and I couldn't help it but agree with this, and that what does Boaz do? He falls in love with her because he sees the kindness. What causes his love for Ruth to be so great? Because he says to her, I've heard all that you have done for your mother-in-law, Naomi. Imagine that. The very passion that has moved upon Boaz is because of her love and concern for Israel. And this is what we see happening again. We see that the, the love that God has, or, or that the love that, that, the, that, the, that the Christian people that have for Israel will move the heart of God. And of course, as I tell you about this as well, the revelation that God gave me, the law of Moses, when he tells us on the Natsit, the, the four fringes that we have on our garment here, you know, that when we're praying, God put that in, he said, pray like this, and we have the four fringes. And then, of course, we were not to glean from the four corners of the field. And how God so beautifully revealed that, showing that it was a representation that we would be scattered to the four corners of the earth. And that the, the Ruth, the Moabitess, the Gentiles would play a great role in returning the, our people to their homeland. That's why we were praying even as Jews. It was to bring us back home again. So many beautiful types that we want to bring out in these great women of faith that were out there. Then we have Esther. Oh my gosh. If, if there was ever a beautiful portrayal of Esther, it has to be Lori Cadoza Moore who God speaks to her heart. She goes to the forefront and stands against anti-Semitism. Her husband and her produced, now I think the second documentary on this, fighting against everywhere they can against anti-Semitism, in the schools, in the public, in the media, no matter where it's at, she stands for Israel. And yet her identity of who she was, Esther, what I'm speaking of here, was hidden from the public. No one knew who she really was. Vashti, that beautiful type of Israel, who was married to the king. And then no wonder why we don't see the name of Hashem written in the book of Esther. It's because the king is portraying who he really is. Now, some people would argue with me and they say, well, you know, this, is, this was a, uh, you know, a, 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 was a Syrian king, I believe, and said that there's no way I could be a type of Israel because of that. And Vashti, she was not Jewish. But you forget, where did Abraham come from? See, Abraham did not. Abraham came from an, an Arabic nation. So did so did Sarah. So yes, it is a beautiful type. And then, of course, a, a, a dear friend said to me one day, in, in disagreement, he said, "Brother, how could Vashti be a type of Israel when all the king wanted to do is bring her before a drunken party?" 
Well, we can tell by the scripture it wasn't a drunken party. They were each one would drink according to his pleasure, not a drunken spree. But then the Holy Spirit so beautifully revealed to me that it wasn't a drunken spree. This was a type of Pentecost. When they were gathered, all the different nations had come together. What did King Asaras do? He brought all the different princes and stuff from the different provinces and brought them in. And then he wanted his wife to come out and be with him. When Yeshua came, the Mashiach, he come and he wanted the whole world. He wanted the world to see that this was his bride. And so when they first came out of the upper room, and they all staggered around like drunk men. They said, these men are full of new wine. But Vashti wanted no, no part of it. Neither did Israel. They didn't want any part of that type of scene, that type of atmosphere. So according to the Christian Bible, the king went to looking for another bride. Now, he never divorced Vashti. That's an interesting point as well for the replacement theologists, and we'll get into that in this film as well. He doesn't divorce her. But he puts another woman in, his, in, in her place, and that was Esther, who also just so happens to be Jewish. And Esther stands when the time comes that Israel is at the point of annihilation. It was Esther that was brought into that power for such a time as this. She types, and remember, the, the Jewish bride in the early days that believed Yeshua to be Mashiach were indeed Jews. And what do we have today? The true believing Christians as we were. Many of them are Jewish as well. Those that really stand for Israel. And of course, there is that typology that she is a, is a type of Israel. Now, not replacement theology, but a type of Israel. She's the spiritual Jew. So she stands up there and not a party, but she goes into the presence of the king and ask for mercy. That's what we should be doing today. This is a message that we need to get out and we need to do it in such a powerful presentation that doesn't just go to 5,000 or 10,000 people that may view this video here, but I'm talking about something that we can get before millions of people, something that we could get aired on national television, worldwide television, that different people will carry it. Sid Roth, no doubt, will carry this to the entire world because he just he loves the story of Esther and what God revealed to me in Esther. And, 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 and you guys know, I, didn't, I only touched half of the story. There's so much more I've not told you. But I would like to get Lori Cardoza Moore as well to be a part of this film to speak about what God is doing, what God led her to do in her life, to show the type of Esther. I'd like to get Michelle Bachman involved in it as well. And because there's so much that this deals with on God's warriors of women that are stepping up, just, you know, it's funny, just like it was when Moshiach came, when Yeshua came in his day, you guys have no idea how the women were the ones that stood up and they fought. No wonder why God has such a great cloud of witnesses amongst the sisters in that day that are reflecting this day. Anyway, so we're asking you, email me, israelreturns at aol.com. Anything that you might know about production work, anything you might know about contacts, other people, people that might be interested, people that might uh, you might have contacts or association with that we can reach out to. We are also looking, by the way, for, um, I want to find an agency that is very strong, and believes and supports the return of, that is a Gentile, by the way, a Gentile agency. I'm looking for a Gentile agency that believes in the return of Israel's to their, uh, the Jews to their homeland because that is the Ruth side of the story. I'd like to interview someone like that. And we want to put this together and we want to get it everywhere we possibly can. I want you to be a part of this. If you can uh, help in that in any way, whether it be your skills, if you can give towards it, we're asking you to help do that. 
we need to get this film put together. We need to have it out before the end of the year. Uh, I would really like to shoot for the 1st of November because I want it. That'll put us about halfway through this nine-month negotiation. Remember how that goes? And that, I have to give Tiff. I don't know where Tiff's out there, what her real name is or anything. But God bless that sister. She really inspired that part of the story to unfold. And God bless you, sister, for your insight that God gave you on that. Uh, but anything that you might know that you could do to help to be a part of this, connect us with the people, whether it be people that can financially help as well. I did talk uh, with, uh, with a sister who her husband is a director, and uh, we did get an idea of what type of cost we're looking at. If we did a simple filming, a simple filming, this is just the editing process, we're looking at about $50,000, and that's a lot of money, but then again, I may find that we got some people out here that can help, that would volunteer, that we can put things together with, and we can do it rapidly, and it would help cut down costs. Because to us, whatever you give is precious, and we want to be good stewards with anything that people entrust with us. Uh, so God bless you, and hope to speak to you again soon.